Hi, my name is Usman. I'm the lead photographer at Sonda Creative. And today, I'm doing a bit of an awkward comparison. I'm comparing the Fuji X100F versus the X-T2 and the 23mm F2 Prime. I know that a lot of people are interested in this. I know that I'm quite curious about how these lenses perform. It's probably not a comparison I should be doing because they're two very different cameras, but we're doing it anyway. We're just, I just want to see what it's like. So I'm in Leeds city center. I'm going to be going around taking a few pictures of some buildings, maybe do a little bit of street photography uh, just to see how these cameras do. And then later on, um, I'm going to be going back into my office and taking some uh, more control tests just to see how well these lenses actually perform because you know how much I love to do some pixel peeping and I'll show you what those, uh, uh, what those images are like as well. So we're going to walk around Leeds now. We'll take some pictures. Um, let's see how these cameras perform. If you've watched up until this point, you may have noticed how the images between the X100F and the X-T2 don't match up when it comes to lighting and time of day. The reason for this is because the SD card in the X100F failed when I was trying to take the images off them. I didn't do anything wrong, uh, it was a brand new SD card, it just failed on me. These things happen. Um, it was the first time that an SD card has failed on me, so it's made me appreciate uh, dual card slots even more. I wish the X100F had dual card slots. It doesn't, it's not a major issue when it comes to these kind of cameras, but of course it is still an issue. Fortunately, because I only shot architecture and buildings, I was able to go out on another day and somewhat recreate the shots. Anyway, back to the video. So the first thing you'll notice between both lenses is the sheer size difference. The lens on the X100F is much smaller. It's pretty, it's pretty much like a pancake lens compared to the 23F2. Uh, the 23F2 is much bigger, the focus ring is much bigger, the aperture ring is much easier to find. And I think that could be a positive because I find myself, whenever I'm using the manual focus ring on this lens, I find my finger comes in the frame or I'll miss where the aperture ring is and it's just a little bit tricky getting your hand all the way around to uh, change the aperture. Um, with this lens, it's so much easier to find and changing the aperture is much easier. It also comes with a lens hood, which the X100F does not and I can't get my head around why Fuji won't just include that with this camera, especially when you consider the price difference. Now, after taking a few shots today in Leeds, the thing that I'm noticing um, between both lenses is that the 23 for the X-T2 is quite a bit wider than the X100F. And I don't know if that's gonna be a plus or a minus because they're, kind, they're supposed to be a 35 mm equivalent, but you are getting a wider angle of view with this lens than you are with this one.
I know I've been talking about ergonomics quite a bit in this video and the reason for that is because after today and shooting it is a big factor between both of these cameras and the, and the lens. Um, for, the, for example with this camera I really don't know where to put my fingers and my, my hands are getting tired holding it. The buttons on the back the, the placement of the buttons, they're not that grey, I keep hitting the Q button and even the ISO dial, the ISO dial, I don't, I don't use it, it's, it's just one of those things that just gets in the way because you have to lift it up and then change the ISO, it's just not, it's just not convenient. With the X-T2 however, um, I find myself just enjoying the camera more because the ergonomics are so much better. I can focus more effectively, change the aperture much easier, the dials are so much easier to use, you've got an ISO dial on top which is dedicated and a shutter speed dial, everything is just much easier to use and I find it to be something that doesn't come in the way when it comes to shooting. Um, I have taken a number of pictures, I'm going to be leaving a link below for everyone to download the images if you want to use them or if you want to edit them or you know, I don't know, you can, use, you, can, you can view the images as much as you want. But uh, what I'm going to do now is we're going to head back into the office, I'm going to take a few uh, pictures between both lenses and we're going to do a little bit more pixel peeping and then we can see what these lenses are really capable of uh, at different apertures. Okay, so back in the office and I've taken a few pictures using both cameras in a more controlled environment and here we have them. Um, we've got the X-T2 with the 23mm lens on the left, X100F on the right and you'll see how the crops are slightly different and this is because the minimum focus distance for both lenses are slightly different. The X100F you can focus in much closer than you can with the X-T2. However, this is not really an advantage for the X100F and I'll show you in a second why. Um, if we zoom in, you can immediately see the difference in sharpness and detail between both lenses. This is when you're shooting wide open at f2. Um, you can see the settings there, but you'll see how with the X100F, and I can assure you this is definitely in, definitely in focus because you can see the uh, plane of focus there. Both of them are focused correctly around this area. And the X100F just has this haze over the uh, image and I, I can't really gather where it's from but you've got this haze going over the image and it's really, really distracting, really quite bad. You can see that glare. I, I don't know what it is. Is it glare or is it haze? Um, but it's definitely there. With the X-T2 and the 23mm lens, it's much sharper, much crisper. The, we don't have that haze over the image and it just looks so much more pleasing. You've got so much more detail, especially in this area when you're looking at the images. And you've got a little bit of um, a little bit of a haze on the edges of the image, but that could be attributed to the bokeh. I don't, I don't I mean, I don't know. Um, but overall, the 23 on the X-T2 is doing much, much better wide open. Stopping down the lens to f4.5 and you'll see a remarkable difference in both lenses in terms of how they perform. So if we quickly zoom in, you'll notice how both lenses sharpen up really well. I mean, they sharpen up really well, especially the X100F. Um, at these apertures, it looks to me like the X100F is actually slightly sharper. You're seeing a little bit more crisper detail on the X100F compared to the X-C2, but it's not a huge amount. It's, it's noticeable, it's, it's there, but it's not a huge, huge amount. It could be just the fact that I'm shooting closer with the X100F than I am with the X-C2, so that could be leading to it. But um, in any case, when you stop down to about f4.5 and f5.6, the results are significantly better on both cameras. And if you stop down even further to f8, and then we zoom in, then the difference kind, it's no longer there. There isn't that much of a difference at this aperture range. Um, I'd say that they're both getting a little bit of diffraction coming in. You can see that these sections, they're just a little bit softer on the X100F and the X-T2 as well. You can just see that uh, a slight amount of softening is starting to creep into the image. You've got more depth of field, but it is now starting to get just a tiniest bit softer for both cameras and both lenses. Uh, I'd say that the ideal ranges, well, not ideal, I'd say the sharpest points for both of these lenses 
are between f4 and f5, 6. That's when you're going to get the best results in terms of sharpness. So there we have it. That's how both lenses perform when you compare them to one another. The X-T2 with the 23mm lens is much sharper wide open compared to the X100F. However, as you stop down to around f4 and f5.6, the differences are no longer there and they both perform at the same level. I know that in this video I've been saying a lot of good things about the X-T2 and I've said nothing but bad things about the X100F, but hear me out. This is not a video to be used as a way of saying which camera is better than the other. I have my certain, I have my own individual preferences and thoughts and whatever, but I know that they're very, very different cameras for very, very different requirements. It's not an apples to apples, or oranges to oranges, or whatever fruit you want to use. This is not a fair comparison. I get that. But the X100F, ergonomics aside, is still my favorite camera. I love this camera. And after I've done this comparison with the lenses, I know that this performs better wide open, but look at the size difference. This is almost three times bigger than the lens on the X100F. And that just, I think that speaks volumes about this camera because Fuji had to make this lens so much bigger just to get it to perform better wide open. And in all fairness, I don't really shoot this camera wide open very much anyway. But doesn't that, like I said, doesn't that speak volumes about the X100F? It is my favorite camera. I love how good the camera is. It performs incredibly well. Um, it's the one that I have with me all the time. I could have bought the X-T2 with the 23mm lens and had better technical performance wide open, but ultimately, I wouldn't have carried that around with me. It's just a lot bigger, it's more cumbersome, and it would have just been left at home. And because of that, the X100F is the best camera because it is the camera that's always with me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. I really do appreciate you taking the time. I also want to say a massive thank you to Imran for helping me film this video. He's got a YouTube channel as well. Please check out his link below. I also want to give a huge thank you to Chloe for letting me borrow her X-T2. You may have noticed it was the graphite version that she's got. It's beautiful. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. Uh, please don't smash that dislike button. Uh, hit the like button instead. Take this video with a grain of salt. It was only done out of curiosity. If you're, uh, if you're looking to help support my channel, please check out my Amazon links below. It really does help me and it doesn't cost you anything extra at all. Um, also check out my Patreon page. Uh, I'm going to be putting up a lot of exclusive content on there and uh, all of my videos will be posted up there earlier for you to watch too. Uh, please subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.